So welcome to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Beaker System, or Mr. Beacon, as we're now calling it. And we're still at the Bluetooth SIG event, the Bluetooth World Forum. Um, and I am um, now talking to Harry Ward, who is uh, does a very specialized job. And in our book, uh, we talked about this process of getting regulatory approval. And you've got BQE on your on your badge there, Harry. What, what's BQE? Uh, BQE, uh, that's Bluetooth Qualification Expert. So I'm one of the guys is a technical assessor on behalf of the Bluetooth SIG. So to get a, a Bluetooth product to market, you need to go through the qualification process. And um, I'm one of the guys that uh, does that. So What's involved in the process? It's assessing the uh, product, uh, technical assessment of uh, test results, listing the product, and you're basically ensuring compliance. Okay, and, and so what are the bad things they're trying to avoid? What, what would a non-compliant device do? It wouldn't work. It's, it's all about interoperability, making sure any Bluetooth device will communicate and it is in compliance with the specifications. All right. And so how do you help people go through that process? What are the things that you help with? Um, I, I would help hold the hand and walk them through the process We're from from the very start, producing the test plan, arranging for testing where it's required, review the results in the test reports, and uh, produce the certificate on the Bluetooth website, and hand that back to the client along with the compliance folder. And so, does every Bluetooth device have to go through this process? Absolutely, yes. And are there ways to avoid it? There's like like the, the some of the module makers. For instance, um, the, the, there are ins and outs. Even, even the modules, they, they will be qualified somewhere along the stage, and there's always going to be a golden thread through, through right from the stage of a, a qualified Bluetooth component to the end product that that might be embedded into, along with the host um, the protocol stack and also the uh, profiles that use you use in the device. So if I'm making a beacon, I go to Nordic and I get one of their modules, and I don't change anything, but I'm just basically putting a different battery and a case on it, would I have to take that through the process? Yes, you, you still need to get a, a declaration ID with the Bluetooth SIG and have your product listed on the Bluetooth website. But less expensive than if oh, I... Ab absolutely. I, I mean, the the, um, the the whole gamut of the uh, qualification process is from a paperwork exercise to um, extensive testing. And, and that, that only comes into play if you're designing perhaps a protocol stack from the ground. And, and what are we talking about in terms of the range of cost from one end of that spectrum to the other? Um, a few hundred to several thousand, perhaps tens of thousands. Okay. And that's not the only certification that, of course, like a beacon manufacturer would have to, to get, is it? What, what are some of the other things? that You've got your Bluetooth certification. What are the others? That right. the, the, as, you, as you say, that's just the starting point. Then you've got to decide on which markets you're going to go into. And, and most people obviously would start off in the continental US, so they would need the FCC approval and have an FCC grant for their um, transmitting device. Um, next on the list would probably be the European market, that's quite a large market. Um, again, that involves specific testing and um, self-declaration. From there, you may want to go into Asia, or South America, and uh, at each stage of these, you need individual approvals for the countries you intend to market in. Cool. And, and what are we talking about in terms of cost for those respective markets? Um, again, it depends on the countries. Singapore is a paperwork exercise, so that's a few hundred to perhaps several thousand, close to 10,000 for some countries where you need in-country testing. Very cool. Well, Harry Ward of Regulatory Consulting and Approvals LLC, thanks very much for educating us. We feel a bit smarter. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. <laughs>